Hello, my name is Emma and I will be talking you through two of the evidence-based practices that I thought would work best in the classroom. So the first one is using graph paper or lined paper for their notes, for their math, for things like that. So I have an example here. So um, as you can see, I created my own graph paper because I don't have any on hand, but this is a great cost saver. It took me literally five seconds to do and if you don't have any already available in your classroom this is a great easy way to do it just take a lined notebook paper and take a ruler and um, you can make it into graph paper so make horizontal lines or I guess vertical lines on the horizontal on the horizontal lines that are already there and in this way at least when they're writing sentences and things like that, they can um, use the spaces as spacers for their letters. And with the vertical height, they're also able to use that to their advantage for the sizing of their letters. Because those are both things that students with dysgraphia or just people with dysgraphia have um, trouble with. And then down here, I wanted to show my... Um, example of line paper it's pretty much the exact same uh, concept for math but they could either use it vertically or horizontally like I did to help line up their numbers um, to keep themselves organized while writing another thing that I just wanted to add on to that is letting your student have a ruler I think that this would be um, almost an essential when they're, you know, trying to do their best to organize their writing. Um, they can make their graph paper themselves or um, they can just use it as like a guide for when they're writing. The second thing that I um, wanted to mention was having different writing tools available to your students specifically with dysgraphia with dysgraphia it might be hard for them to figure out uh, quickly what the best writing utensil for them is um, and so having this here on their desk um, just letting them know that they can use it to switch through different writing utensils for how they um, feel might be best for their handwriting so having pens available, sharpies, pencils, skinny markers, thick markers, highlighters, um, just different grips um, for them to have because um, at first they might need something bigger like a marker to grab onto that helps them keep steady and then they can work down to a pencil or they just stay with a marker the whole year. Either way is fine, but having that available to them helps them um, almost have their own sense of agency and being able to figure out what works best for them without um, someone telling them what's best for them, which is sometimes really hard for students with um, any sort of learning disability. So those are my two evidence-based practices.